Have you ever heard that saying? If you start right, you will finish right. But unfortunately, a friend of mine this morning, yeah, I went to visit him. There he was, happy as a sandpipe until he didn't start right. The job was all right, oh mess, mess. He didn't finish right either. And all he was trying to do is countersink the nuts of his coach bolts. That's all he was trying to do. He looked at the right old mess. Well, you see, he didn't start right, yeah? He did an arse about face. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Countersink the nuts of your coach bolts. Without getting in an old mess like he did. Oh my God, it looked awful. It really did. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate it. And I'm not editing this video, just so you know. So it might be a bit longer than it needs to be, but... Say the V. Okay, so we've got a piece of wood. Do, 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 do. There it is. That is a piece of wood, a scrap of wood. And what we need to do is we need to countersink that nut, that bolt, and the washer. And there's a few things we need to think about when doing that. Mm -hmm. One thing you don't want to be doing, because this is what he was doing, is go all gun out. You get your drill. Oh, oh no, I'm going to drill a hole. Oh, there we go. Drill, 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 drill. I drill a hole. Oh, oh, wonderful. I got me a hole. Yeah, butchered that. Yeah. And uh, then he thought to myself, oh, okay. Well, he already thought with this because he actually needed, he knew he needed the count sinker. Because what he didn't want is the, you know, the washer and the bolt and what have you and the nut all sticking out so people get caught on it. He looked untidy. It'd be like that, you see. And they want it all count sunk so it's flush. All right? This was in the beam. This was in an oak beam in a French farmhouse. So there he was. Anyway, he, he took his bolt out. Right? If you want to count sink that now, without thinking what he's just done, he's made a tit of himself. Okay, so what do you do? Okay. Oh, you get your drill. All right, you gotta, maybe what you need to do is you need to obviously count sink that. Oh, okay. You stick a bit in, like so. You get in there like that, and you start drilling away. Oh. And it looks a right old mess. Oh dear, it's all fluffy, it's all shitty. It's even an oval. You don't want an oval. No. So it's end up much bigger than it needs to be. So once that's obviously a bit deeper than that, but once that's in there like so, and you've got your washer on there, and your nut on there, it's going to be a right old Nord mess all the way around it. Oh, you don't want that. That's just going to look awful. You don't want to do it that way. There's a simple tip. A tip that people don't necessarily think of straight away. They just think they're getting the bolt in. That's all they're thinking about. Well, you need to think ahead. And there is a really simple tip. If you are using a spade bit such as this one, it's got its own little guide pin in it on the front there. All right. You have to mark it to whatever depth you want it to be, like so. And then you drill your hole first. Drill the countersink first. <laughs> Like so, ish. Right. So you know, got you know exactly where the middle is. Okay. Look at the mess of the other one is. That one's a lot better. I know it's only a spade bit. It's in it's because it's a bit of blunt spade bit. Anyway, to be fair. But also it's a bit of old shitty old pine. A bit of Norman fir. So um, now I'm going to do. Now I'm going to drill that hole. <laughs> These new chuck on that drill. Right. So. With that in mind, as you see, as you see, as you see, blah, 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 blah. Just take a bit of sandpaper. Pick the horse, that'll do. Get rid of the fluff. So I'm not editing this video. Alright, so this isn't, you know, don't be wrong, there are better ways. And one better way would be to use a force and a bit like this one. Now these, these force and a bits are great but they're only really great if you use them in a pillar drill. Try and use a force and a bit like that in a battery drill. Have your can be a bit, um, you know, can wave about a bit. You do have a little locator pin on it, but you really want to put the drill in a vertical press, ideally. If I, uh, well, I'll show you that in a minute. So here we've got the uh, uh, actual um, coach bolt here. Push it through the hole, as though we're drawing two bits of wood together. You should have a timber connector in there. As well, to be fair, it's like a like a flat wash with spikes on, and uh, and we'll put the washer on there. There's another little tip for you as well, actually. And uh, now you're gonna look at this. That hole's quite big, isn't it? For that, uh, yeah, for the um, what's going on there? Right, there you go. 
So here goes my compressor. The, if you look at that, you feel some of that hole's quite big for that wash, yeah, for the washer and that. Okay, it, this one is actually because the size that I've got is 32mm. Could have been done about 28mm already. But what you've got to allow for is not the size of the washer. What you've got to allow for is that. It's your socket. Can you still get your socket in there? Because if you can't, well then you're not going to go up and do it up, are you? That'd be silly. Okay? And this still put this also applies if you want to um, sink the head of the bolt, the bolt as well. So if you're coming from the other direction, you might not go so deep. Yeah, like so. You know? Because once that's pulled in, the square on, on there will pull into the wood anyway. But it just means it's just. It's fit, if, when you do it this way though, ideally the actual hole, the countersunk hole, the recess, should be the same diameter, just slightly bigger than that. And the reason for that, than the head, sorry, of the coach bolt. And the reason for that is that so it's um, it can sit, the sides of your recess can sit on the sides of the bolt and it creates more strength, especially if you've got sort of this sort of kind of lateral movement, like so. But as you see, that's, that one is complete and out of mess. So I'm just going to show you um, cutting the, um, the recess using the force in a bit, which creates a relatively flat bottomed hole. It does a neater job than what the actual spade bit. These, these, these kind of gnaw the way through. Um, but the force in a bit is definitely better. But also this one is about size. This one's only 30, is, I think it's 30 mil and this is 32. Oh no, that's 28 mil. 28 or 25, it might even be 25. But as long as that is you know, the right size for that, Ooh, it's a bit on the tight side. So ideally that will be a little bit bigger. So we'll move to the actual pillar drill, and I'll just sort of demonstrate that. Like I said, I'm not editing this video, so I apologise if it's got on the long side. You've probably got what you need to get from it anyway, but I just want to just show you. I'm holding this by hand at the moment, so it's a bit awkward. In you go. Yeah, it's very awkward, in fact. <laughs> Do single handed. All right, so we're going to tie it up like so, but also we're going to use a chuck key. I do all the sides. I know it sounds a bit strange, but I do all of them. Make sure, make sure of it. Sometimes a bit slack in there, you see. And my other little tip up here: stick a magnet on, because then you can actually put your tools on there like so, so you don't lose them. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to put you just put you down here, try and position so you can see still. It's not be very close, mind. Right. Uh, there we go. And now what we're going to do is could be a bit higher than that, really, couldn't you? Well, after do. So. We're going to now drill using the force of it. Bring it up there. Hopefully a bit of wood will spin around. <laughs> Probably will. It creates a much neater, much neater hole. Peeling the wood off instead of like gnawing at bits. And also be perpendicular to the actual uh, face of the wood. You know, like so. Remember, I'm doing it, but do it really safely, single handed. <laughs> I'm protecting my other hand, you see, that's what it is, that's what it's safe. Now, if we have a look at this, how much neater this is. But we have to remember if you're on the building site, it would be pretty awkward to do this. Now, if you look at that fairly flat bottomed hole, well, that's quite a reasonable little hole. Then you've got that's one we did with the spade bit, the spade bit here. We're well, using the spade bit first to, drip, to create the counter sink and then finishing off to create the hole with the drill afterwards. So don't put, don't drill the hole first like that, you know, like that one is. No, um, do that last. And also using a spade bit like that one, if you do it first, that goes all over the place, which is wobbles about in the hole. Because you know, it's slack though, isn't it? It's, it's nothing to centralise it. Um, so you use the spade bit first, or the force in a bit. And you create a hole first, but look how much neater the um, the force in a bit is in comparison to the spade bit. Uh, it's, it's considerable, a considerable difference. So, um, where's my bolt gone? I'll show you. Well, I had a bolt here a minute ago, and it's disappeared. Oh, there it is. I just found it there. So, I'm not going to drill the hole right through, but I'll just show you. If that's sitting there like so, maybe you've got your hole through there now as well, or you would have. And then you've got your nut, but that's just so much neater. So if you can use a forstner, right, um, it, it, yeah, it's quite a good idea. Now there's another little tip, okay, another little trick you can do. If you're using a forstner, uh, 
a force a bit, so I'm just going to grab that force a bit again over there. I'm going to put it back in the drill, in the uh, little Tarsi battery drill, which needs new chucks. But chucks cost money, you see, and when you ain't got much, well, there you go, that, you know. Everyone thinks YouTube's a, you know, rolling one. I don't know if you're getting masses of views. I don't get masses of views. But anyway, so the other tip, okay? We need a second piece of wood. Alright? Uh, there's a bit kicking over, kicking around over here. Okay, we've got a second bit of wood. Now, if you're struggling with a force in a bit, okay, you're trying to drill in the side here before if it's everything on the side or have you might on top of a pair of steps or what have you. You're trying to drill that hole and you want it nice and neat like that one, and you're struggling. Okay, you're struggling. If you're wobbling about all over the place, there's a tip. Okay, what you do while you're on the ground, you can have these in the in your toolbox ready to go if you want. You know, grab a bit of wood like this one, really force in a bit. If you, you know, it's a wobble metal over the place, but it doesn't matter at this stage, it doesn't matter. Look, let's get in there, that's fine. So, as you see, I've created a little hole, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want that hole to go away through. There, I'll start going down go from the other direction. So I've got the middle. So I don't create that, that mess. Right, so now I know. Okay, so I've got that. Alright, what, what are you going to do with that, Mark? Well, what I'm going to do with that is what I'm about to show you. <laughs> Screwdriver bit. Okay. Grab a screwdriver a bit like that, any one will do. And then want a couple of screws. There's some screws. Any old screw will do. Normally I'd count and sink it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to worry. So what we're going to do is bring this down a little bit so you can see a bit better. You say, so I'll say for instance, I want my hole to be there. I'd position that. Right there, and I'll put a couple of screws in there. You don't have to go all in. Right, just like that, just hold it into place. Use a clamp if you want, if you've got facilities to do it. But if you're inside the beam, you're not going to, are you? And now I've got something to steady the ship. It'll also help guide you go. Well, if, if you cut these first on the pillar drill. You'll then make sure you, you go in straight. And now I'm just going to drill away. Remove the screws. And now we have another relatively flat hole, very similar to the other one we just created with the pillar drill. You see? So that, if you have three of those in your tool box, <coughs> ready to go. Ideally, made the, make that hard was idea. This is a bit of old pallet I had to kick the bone. Um, but yeah, that was just uh, guides the actual force in a bit. Okay. The next stage, what you do is then you can then you know drill your hole right through. Like so. Remember, you're on site or something. Or you don't any house. You don't. You're not necessarily in the workshop. Obviously, if you're in the workshop, everything becomes that much easier. So then you've got your bolt going through there, like so. You can put your washer on like that and drop that to the bottom of the hole. And also you get your nut on like that. But you see now, because the hole's about, well, this one's going to be a bit tight, because if you remember rightly, that, that is almost the same size as the outside of the, my actual socket. But no, it's actually quite good. See, perfect, actually, not see? Yeah? So that's how you should do it. It's so simple. So you do your countersink before you do anything at all. If you want to sink your nut or the head... Yeah, and or even, yeah, with or without a washer, you're using timber connectors either, even. So for that, you thought I was in there like so. It's so much neater. It's no brainer, and it's um, you know, if you know how to do it, you're not gonna, you know, make those silly mistakes. Especially if you made that mistake once, and you end up with a with that nasty mess. Yeah, 
that's without any help. That's with that first one on you know on my left is the one that um, we did without uh, doing the can sink first. We drilled the hole first, and the middle one, as you can see, was done with the spade bit. Um, but we cut the counter sink first, you know, the little recess. And uh, these other two here are done with the Forstner. The first one with the hole in, we done with the Forstner in the actual pillar drill. And the one on the end, we did using the little tool that we knocked out while we were on site. So it doesn't have to be difficult, you, can, you know, you just, if, as long as you think ahead. And that's why I say, if you start right, you'll finish right. And I'm not talking about start right planers or saws, no. <laughs> I mean, you start right, as in at the beginning of whatever you do. Just think about what you're doing before going about gun-ho, you know. Especially when you're dealing with wood and stuff like that. A little bit of logic. I know, I know, I know, common sense is no longer too common. But, you know, sometimes you just got to do it, haven't you? Anyway, while you're here, will you be most kind and boop the old like button and maybe subscribe to the channel? Do you know what happened then? You have to press that little, you know, little, that little bell icon as well. You'll get a warm fuzzy feeling inside every time I upload another video. Come on, do it now, do it now. Look into my eyes, not around my eyes, look into my eyes. Yes. Okay, that's enough of that. Ta-ta. <laughs>